What's up, people? It's your girl, Adiola. So, first of all, I just want you guys to know that some people have been impersonating me on YouTube, as you must have seen. It, it started with one person that used my name, my last name, and my profile picture on my YouTube. And this person replies to every single comment telling people to give them Bitcoin. Please know that that's not me. I have never asked anybody for Bitcoin. <laughs> In the comment section, I have reported this person to YouTube. And then I wrote a disclaimer that someone is pretending to be me and they're asking people for Bitcoin in the comment section. As soon as I wrote that and I changed my YouTube profile picture, you wouldn't believe this. Somebody else decided to do the same thing. <laughs> They decided to impersonate me. Now it's like two people at least that are impersonating me. This is so sad. I don't know why anybody would do this. Like, seriously, dudes. Like, if you want people to give you Bitcoin, ask in your name. You never know. Maybe someone will give you or not. This is not hustling. This is not being smart. This is just trying to scam people. And please do not scam anybody in my name. I don't ask anybody for money. The times that I have raised money on this show is usually on GoFundMe and everybody sees the link in the description. So if you have given anybody bitcoin in my name please know that you are being scammed i really really apologize i don't know who these people are i have reported both of them to youtube i'm hoping that youtube takes them down asap i don't know why it's taking so long and if you want to start your youtube channel please start it in your name so if you're wondering which one is mine the legitimate page will always have a check mark in front of it all my pages are verified the same thing with my facebook my instagram my twitter page my instagram page um my youtube page is also verified if you don't see that check mark, it's not me. And you should look for the number of subscribers. I have almost 500,000 subscribers. If you don't see that, please do not take that person as me. That's a scammer. You don't have to impersonate somebody else. So we're starting with the good news. 53 people who were kidnapped in Niger State. This is different from the 42 students. These 53 people were kidnapped on a government-owned bus in Kundu village. They have been released by the kidnappers. We're so happy about this. We're still trying to get the 42 students and staff that were kidnapped in Niger State as well. I mean, I can just imagine what it's like for parents now in Nigeria that want to send their children to boarding school, knowing fully well that boarding schools are now being targeted by bandits and by Boko Haram, you know, terrorists in general. So we're still hoping that they will release the 42 students, but the 53 people who were kidnapped the same week have been released. But you know, there's a worrying trend of paying millions upon millions of naira in ransom to kidnappers, to bandits, without arresting them for what they've done. First of all, we need to stop deceiving ourselves in Nigeria that we don't know who the bandits are. Like, seriously, we need to stop. Or that we don't know who, who's Boko Haram. We need to stop deceiving ourselves. The governor of Zamfara State met with these bandits to negotiate. The governor of Niger State met with them to negotiate. Sheikh Igumi went to meet with the bandits, not just to negotiate, but now he's advocating for amnesty for the bandits. Haba, haba. So from this, what is your recommendation to the federal government? Then, if somebody will continue, then we take them. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, and then they will tell us that our soldiers and police don't know where the bandits are. I'm like, seriously, why are we deceiving ourselves? I've said it on this show in the past that the day that the government of Nigeria wants to stop kidnapping and the attacks by Boko Haram, that is the day that it will stop. But they don't want it to stop, obviously. How can Sheikh Gumi, by the way, and I respect this man, how can this man be asking for amnesty for bandits? These bandits were asking for 500 million naira. He also said that uh, non-Muslim soldiers should not attack Muslim bandits. That this is going to trigger chaos. I'm like oh my god so to fight kidnappings now in nigeria is by religion muslim kidnappers should be exempt and only dealt with by muslim soldiers hey oh lord we are in trouble and speaking of trouble our condolences to the families of those who lost their loved ones in the military plane crash in abuja last sunday all seven people on board died instantly the crash happened due to engine failure and it's just heartbreaking those who died include flight lieutenant haruna gadzama uh, he's a captain also flight lieutenant henry pio a co-pilot and and then flying officer Michael Opara, he's the Airborne Tactical Observation System ATO Specialist. Warrant Officer Basi Etim, he's ATO Specialist. And then Flight Sergeant Olasunkami Olawumi, ATO Specialist. Sergeant Ugochuku Oluka, ATO Specialist. And Aircraftman Adewale Johnson, onboard technician. It's heartbreaking that all these people lost their lives in this. I mean, can't if, I can't even imagine what their family members must be going through right now. Enough of plane crashing due to engine failures in Nigeria. 
can we please do something about this? And as much as I appreciate people showing up at accident scenes to help in Nigeria, honestly, we really need to do something about crowd control at accident scenes. Otherwise, it could prevent first respondents from getting there easily. And if anything goes wrong, more people are likely to get injured or even die just because there's a huge crowd. So please let's work on uh, crowd control in Nigeria. Once again, may the souls of the departed rest in peace. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So you guys must have seen the video of the man of God once again boasting about his private jet. This time around the, the third one. <laughs> you don't need to play it by the way because I know you. They already know who I'm talking about. In COVID, I bought a jet. The third, I have three. The third one. In COVID. Did I not say that you should not? I was praying for COVID not to end because I was resting. There's a rumor going around that I have a machine that prints money. I like that rumor. Are you done? When you speak in tongues, you are printing money. All right, whatever. I didn't want to talk about this because everybody has talked about it. <laughs> but you know, there's one aspect that I believe that people are not talking about, and that's what I want to talk about. First of all, to Suleiman's followers, defenders, and all the Christians who are offended, whenever we talk about any man of God on this show, those of you that will write in the comment section that touch not my anointed or leave their judgment for God, to all of you guys, please know that nobody is touching your anointed. <laughs> I've said this before on this show that every single child of God is anointed, which is why that Bible verse that you are quoting out of context, touch not my anointed, actually refers to the nation of Israel when they were going to the promised land. God warned their enemies, the surrounding nations, not to attack them. He said, touch not my anointed. The verse was not referring to any priest or any pastor. That verse, touch not my anointed, was referring to the entire nation of Israel, both young and old, every single one of them. So if you're a child of God, you are also anointed. So um, I just wanted to make that clear so don't let anybody scare you that if you say the truth about something that is happening as the bible encourages that we should that something bad will happen to you it's not true it won't so we are not touching your anointed let me start from there we are taking a critical look at the peripheral level of the equation of a man of god boasting about only three private jets praying that covid will not end just because he is balling in money and more importantly telling people that when you speak in tongues you are printing money Amen, somebody. <laughs> So we are not attacking your man of God. We are just discussing what happened. By the way, he was talking about the fact that many people are saying that pastors have no livelihood just because churches were closed during COVID. And then he was talking about how he was doing fine. In fact, he bought his third private jet at the time. FYI, I pay tight and offering before you start. <laughs> I do. And God is so faithful. Now, the thing that pains me is these pastors, many of them make you think that they are wealthy simply because they are close to God. They make you think that the way to be wealthy or to be financially free is by paying tithe and offering just by paying tithe and offering they make you think that if you don't give to god you won't have money they make you bring your full salary as first fruit they tell people don't give if you like don't give nobody will beg you but if you don't give you are cursed they say all these things and so a lot of believers today are giving not because they want to give to god but because they want to make money they want something back they are sowing seed because they want to reap that's the main reason why a lot of people are giving today all their offerings they call it seed because they want to harvest something there's nothing wrong in trusting god to bless you when you give and i'll still address that but when that's the sole purpose of giving it doesn't go with what the bible teaches and this is why matthew 6 33 makes it clear first and foremost seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and then the bible promised that all these other things will be added unto you but it's so unfortunate that churches today are no longer focusing on righteousness or the kingdom of god they're focusing mainly on money and miracle blessings and miracles that's the main reason why a lot of people go to church today and so it breaks my heart because most prayer points today in nigeria and so many african countries are for breakthroughs people are serving god because they want god to bless them because of what they can get from god and i can hear some people say what's wrong with that Everything is wrong with it because number one, please know that you don't have to be a Christian to have money. You do not have to be a Christian to have money or to build wealth. If you think I'm making it up, just take a look at the richest people in the world. Many of them don't even believe in God. Okay, just look at the richest man in Africa. Whether he got it through legitimate means or not, Dangote is 
a Muslim. And he even, he showed me, you know, he carries young ladies. <laughs> and that's the topic for another day. God is not wicked. There are principles to building wealth, to making money. Anybody that knows about these principles can follow them and can build wealth. Doesn't matter whether you are Christian or not. And that is what pains me that these pastors don't tell their members how to build wealth. And it's all in the Bible, by the way, especially in the book of Proverbs. Do you know that there are more than 2,300 Bible verses on money and wealth and possessions? If you don't believe me, just Google it. And it's because God wants you to be comfortable. It's not like God doesn't want you to have money. No, he does. He wants you to live a life of wisdom that will translate into being financially free. He doesn't want you to be at the mercy of other people at all. There are so many Bible verses to back this, but he doesn't want you to give because you want to make money. No, that he doesn't want you to give to him because you want to make money. That's not the kind of relationship he wants. As a matter of fact, God wants to bless you just so that you could be a blessing. You could be a channel to so many people. There's a reason why God placed you where you are. Why do you think you are placed right where you are with all the things around you? When it comes to giving, we're supposed to be the hands and feet of Christ. Anyway, but at the same time, the same God said you cannot serve God and money because he knows that once all your focus is on money, 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 it, you, <laughs> it's hard to serve him at the same time. Amen, somebody. But you know, many pastors just make their followers believe it's only by giving that you make money and you have to give to them. No, it's so much more than that. And I'm, I'm not disputing that when you give that God will bless you, but not when you give solely because you want something back. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Cheerful, not someone that is giving because the pastor says you are doomed if you don't give. God does not need your money, by the way. God doesn't spend neither. He doesn't spend money. He's fine. He doesn't need your money. Beyond giving, you have to know about budgeting. You have to know what God says about getting into debt, you know, borrowing money from people. You have to know how to plan your life to avoid being in some situations. You have to know about saving money. You have to know about investing money, all the investment opportunities and so on and so forth, which is why I was appalled when he said that when you're speaking in tongues, you're printing money. I'm like, hey, the goal of being a Christian or speaking in tongues is not to make money. Amen, somebody. Now, unlike some of these pastors, <laughs> There are not willing to talk about this thing because so many pastors are not telling you about their investments, their investment opportunities, you know? So unlike these pastors, I am willing to talk about things like budgeting, you know, debt. Should you get into debt? How to get out of debt? Planning one's life, investment opportunities, building wealth, whether you are a Christian or not. I'm willing to talk about these principles. I'm not rich, obviously. <laughs> I don't have a private jet, but I know what it's like to be poor, like really, really really poor, that you can afford to pay for your train pass. In New York City, I met somebody <laughs> that you can even afford to buy toilet paper and it's not even COVID time. Ah, Baba, your girl has really suffered. And I was doing my show the entire time. I was well known. And people would be writing all kinds of comments that I'm getting paid by politicians, this, this, that. <laughs> And I was suffering and I was still doing my show. Anyway, so, but at the same time, I also know what it's like to build a savings account, to plan one's life so that you are not at the mercy of others, even when you don't have money. The people don't need to know that you don't have money, like living below your means and also doing like little, little investments. So like I said, so many of these pastors know about so many investment opportunities. Many of them have lands. Many of them have houses. They have stores. They have filling stations. Many of them are buying cryptocurrencies. Believe you or me, somebody like Suleiman probably has Bitcoin. I'm just saying. <laughs> A lot of them are into stocks and so many investment opportunities. I don't know why they are not teaching their church members this is how you get out of the rat race. There's something called the rat race when all you are, you walk, 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 and everything just goes into bills, bills, bills. Hey, that's not how to live. I told you earlier that there are more than 2,300 Bible verses on money. So I'm willing to share if anyone is interested. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section, even if it's one person or two people, and I will make those videos and upload them if you're interested. I mean, I don't know much as you guys already know, but I'll cover little things like how do you plan your life, by the way, especially before you get married or even if you are married or before you have kids. Should you plan all these things? How do you plan to be wealthy? What is it that rich people do? What are some of the habits of rich people? When should you start talking to your children about money? School doesn't prepare you for the real life. Amen, somebody, so, so many things that you don't 
don't get to learn in school. How do you save money? Why must you save money? And how do you save when you can barely survive? When you're already living from hand to mouth? How can you save money? <laughs> how do you invest? Where do you start? Do I have to pay my own tithe? Do I have to pay tithe to a particular church? Ooh, that's a very controversial one. Anyway, if anyone is interested, let me know. I'll be so happy to talk about this things. We can rob minds, you know. I'll learn from you guys, you learn from me, maybe <laughs> one or two things. No, but like I said, a lot of these pastors, they're not telling you the whole truth about how they make their money. Yes, they're making money from Titan offering, that's obvious, but they are investing this money that they are making, they are multiplying it as they continue to make money from the Titan offering. So we should talk about wealth, you know, about <laughs> making money, about getting out of the rat race, and that would be definitely different from the show, and I will shoot those videos and upload them so let me know if you're interested in that and then we will get started on working on those as well also working on the news amen somebody anyway congratulations to uh, pastor Suleiman. hopefully he's happy now that he has three private jets i'm not sure how this brings anybody closer to the kingdom of god but hey my own issue is if they're not using these private jets for humanitarian purposes honestly i don't see how they justify having three private jets the other time he said that very soon there will be buses that will be taking his church members for free and then he said someday they will have planes that will be carrying their church members from Abuja, dropping them for free. God told me we are going to have our own airlines, aircraft, hangars that will carry members for free. Members are going to Abuja, there will be a plane to lift them. Members are going to, for free. So if you are complaining about one jet, I don't know what you are going to do when you are 20. Is this what he's using the private jets for? Or is he chartering these private jets? I mean, maybe his church members can help us to understand. Are you getting free jet flights from, <laughs> from his church to Abuja and other parts of Nigeria? Let us know in the comment section. Anyway, you guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Tanzania, ladies and gentlemen, it shock us, as in fact, we are still in shock, that the president, who is known for downplaying COVID-19, the president of Tanzania, who has said that his country does not have COVID at all and at all, because he prayed it away. And the same president came out last Sunday and said that the country is experiencing a problem with COVID. And for the first time, he's ordering his citizens to wear masks. I can't. Wow. I don't understand. This whole time, he could have saved so many lives. Journalists have been reporting that COVID was killing people in Tanzania, but he was hiding it. He was downplaying it. He said that it's the Western people's wish. It's the Western media. I guess they can no longer hide it. Or maybe during church service last Sunday, God told him to get his acts together. I don't know. The president was put under a lot of pressure to finally follow the World Health Organization guidelines because his citizens were traveling to neighboring countries and infecting people with COVID-19 in other countries. But of course, he still does not believe in foreign media made products, even foreign made masks. The president doesn't believe in it. So he's ordering his citizens to wear only made in Tanzania masks, which is great because that would make them patronize made in Tanzania products. I think that's wonderful. So don't expect them to wear like made in South Africa masks. Like mm -mm, he doesn't trust that. Although I don't know how he would enforce that because I don't know how he would be able to tell if someone is not wearing a mask that was made in Tanzania. But you know, I'm still looking for pictures of him wearing masks. I'm sure there will be pictures out there, but we haven't seen it. All we know is that he's making all his aides wear masks. So let me know if you've seen pictures of him in masks. In fact, post it, share it. We'll love that. But we're just glad that he's finally admitting that COVID is real and he's doing something about it. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> So we miss Gambia's Independence Day by a few days. Ladies and gentlemen, the Gambia, my Gambia, has now been independent for 56 years. What? Congratulations, my Gambian people. Gambia gained its independence from the British Empire in 1965, calling themselves the Gambia. They used to be called the Gambia Colony and Protectorate from 1821 to 1965. Also, the name of their currency is Dalasi, which has an exchange rate of two cents to a dollar. They primarily use English as a national language but also use several other languages such as Fula, Arabic, Balanta, Gambian, Hindi and French. Their population is estimated at 2.1 million. They used to be 400,000 during the time of independence in 1965 and their economy is estimated to be worth around 1.8 billion dollars after they've grown their GDP by 6% for almost two decades in a row. Happy Independence Day to my Gambian people. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to leave you with sight and sound of the Gambia.
channel is Vero and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please be sure that you do that. Until next time, I'm going to see you later. Peace out.